Good afternoon, this is Ed Pozzuoli, President of Trip Scott, and welcome to another webcast in our series. And today we are honored to have Senator Chris Smith. Uh, Senator Smith represents District 31, which is mostly Broward and all the way goes back to Sunrise from downtown Fort Lauderdale. Chris, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be back. So Broward survived the session. The session, the legislative session this year is now over. Give us some highlights of uh, what was accomplished. Well, I think going through a budget of this year um, with some extra dollars in the budget, it, it was pretty good. And Broward fared well on it. Good. Uh, we got a couple of uh, things in the budget, a couple of road projects. One thing that I'm very proud of, uh, we were able to put $3.5 million in the budget to start Broward College of uh, redeveloping the downtown site here. Okay. Um, with FAU pulling out um, Broward College, it's a $15 million expansion for them to do it. And so we were able to start the project this year with 3.5 with knowing that once we get started, we'll be able to secure funding going through. So I think that would be tremendous for Broward College and for downtown to give more options for those downtown that may still want to go back to school or continue their education. So expanding that downtown campus, I think, would be tremendous for Broward County. And not a lot of risk because David Armstrong and his group are pretty good stewards of public money. Uh, they, they've done a tremendous job. And it was an easy sell. Uh, Broward College, amongst all the, uh, the colleges, they didn't have the most need for um, class space. And so between what they've done through the years with, with the dollars and their need, it was an easy sell. But I'm, I'm excited that that's getting started. Uh, we Another local project I'm excited, the Urban League. That does a great job in the community. Got a um, $2 million for a micro loan program to help small businesses get started in the community. I think um, Jermaine smith Bar and, yep. and their board, including Dennis um, Smith from this firm who chaired the board for a while, have done a great job. And I think that type of program and trusting it to them um, to administer statewide with small businesses, I think is real good for Broward. Uh, but the budget, I think, came out pretty good. We were fair in every realm. Of course, some things I'd want different. I'd want a little more on the education side and a little more for the environment. But I think all in all, it was a very fair budget and quite easy when, when it's a, we have a few more dollars in it. So when the economy picked up, state revenues yes. uh, picked up, it's a lot easier than a couple of years ago. Uh, a couple of years ago is who didn't get, you know, how much are we going to cut and can we you know, not cut you as much? But now we were able to give some money back to the taxpayers. I mean, with the rolling back the tax that we were forced to do years ago on the vehicle fees, um, that helps out um, to, to families and get them $15, $25 back. But also a couple of businesses, it helps them to have fleets of vehicles. I mean, that's going to be a boost. And so I think being able to do that uh, within the budget was pretty good. And the, and the school tax-free days came back. Yes, tax-free day and hurricane tax-free days. Hopefully we won't need it. Right. But being able to get those supplies at the, uh, right before hurricane season, I think would be real That's good. That's good to encourage people to be prepared. Yes. Right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the college uh, in-state tuition issue on uh, immigration. Well, that, How that did was, that come up? Uh, election year. <laughs> it was, it's been proposed a couple of years. It's been proposed. And um, I think the Speaker of the House um, stepped forward and became a priority of the Speaker. Will Weatherford say, yeah, he was a great speaker, a uh, good friend of mine. Um, he took that issue up. And he's a Republican, right? Yes, yes. So a little bipartisan. So if our viewers out there can understand there is bipartisanship the, in the, the state of Florida. The Republican Speaker brought it up as an issue this year. And once he pushed it forward, I think once you have one chamber pushing it, the Senate was resistant. Um, and then when the governor weighed in and former governors weighed in, it was kind of two on one. And so the Senate was kind of forced to bring up the issue and pass it. And I think uh, for the cost of it, not as much, but the symbolism of it, um, I, I think is better showing that. And the whole discussion was these are kids and the way we framed it, kids who were brought here. They, it wasn't their decision. Their parents brought them here illegally. They've gone through the system. They've gone through Florida high schools. They have to be here at least four years through high school. Uh, you know, let's give them an opportunity. So these aren't just people coming over now and no. then going right in and getting the benefit. These are actually Floridians, yes. in a sense, who've lived here a long time. Yes, I think the years you, you have to be here uh, over a decade, but you also have had to go through three years at least of Florida high school to be able to, uh, to benefit from this. And there was uh, another controversial piece was the medical marijuana. Yes. Uh, and that passed. Yes. Well, in the mer medical marijuana, one thing we have to explain to the public is, is not the sitting and smoking marijuana. What passed is an elixir. 
There are certain elixirs that are drawn from the marijuana plant that help kids when they're getting seizures and help kids with certain diseases. And so we finally passed to allow that elixir to be used. And the reason it had to be done because it comes from the marijuana plant. But by no means is it the, you know, I got glaucoma, let me get a, you know, a joint to, to relieve that. It's the elixir part of the medical marijuana. And I mean, when you meet those kids and meet those families, a lot of members, especially of the Senate, change their mind. Once you meet these kids who are having 20 seizures a day and the parents are begging, give my kids a chance. I think that passing through was a, a tremendous show of humanity by the legislature. Uh, my understanding is there was also money put in to ensure or, or, or to support foster kids, too, yes. in keeping and uh, protecting them and keeping the family together, or well, trying to, anyway. Yeah, well, protecting kids was a major focus. The first bills we passed were regarding pedophiles and sexual deviants, uh, strengthening the laws against them. We passed them early in session. Governor signed them. Uh, we wanted to let the world know that Florida is not a place, if you're a pedophile, you don't need to be in Florida. We need, we, so we kind of passed that early on. But then also we started taking a look at kids in general and in the foster care system. Uh, we were losing some kids to turn 18, they age out without a lot of help. So we started putting some help into the foster care system, helping them get driver's license, helping them kind of transition at 18 from foster care beyond. But also looking back at foster care in general, as you mentioned, trying to keep families together and doing what we can to keep um, siblings together and try to keep a, a, as much of a nuclear family as we can, even if they're put into the system. So, Senator, um, your priorities go forward. Now that this legislation, legislative session is closed, what are your priorities going forward for uh, your constituents in Broward County as a whole? I think to help with small businesses some more. I think the, the loan program with the Urban League, but to do things to encourage small business, uh, to do things to help small businesses, regulation I'm looking at again. And I go back to the story, I own a small strip mall here in Fort Lauderdale, and I had to pave the parking lot. It took me four days of going from the county to DPR to the city. I mean, it was just too much to pave a little parking lot. There are a lot of businesses, in, and I'm a state senator. There are a lot right. of businesses out there that don't have the time, the money, resources to do those little things. And so a lot of the duplicative uh, uh, things that you must do as a steps. business. Yeah. So we worked on that uh, a couple of years ago, and I was able to do a little bit when it comes to not-for-profits, but to expand that more. I mean, we have this wonderful thing called computers. Right. You know, share information. I shouldn't have to fill out the same form 15 times. You know, the county should be able to share with the city, should be able to share with the state, and let's let businesses actually do their business and stop spending time doing paperwork. Any other priorities on your end and for Broward, you know, protection of the beaches or... or yeah, beach renourishment is, right. is huge. And we have to make sure we, we take care of the airport expansion. One thing that came up this year, um, the city of Dania was, is receiving a huge hit by tearing down the Hilton to, to expand the, right. um, the airport. And I was able to work in an amendment to help relieve some of that um, stress that they're feeling. I mean, Broward is, is, is on the crest of, of huge things. I mean, we've been moving forward and doing things but tying in the port to the airport, I think it's going is the next the rail. big step. The rail and the F FEC line coming through downtown. I think those things are is going to make Broward an international city. Um, Dade County has expanded as much as it can, and it's done a lot of things wrong, whereas Broward's done a lot of things right, and we can benefit from people now looking a little north as to be an international city. And so working those type of big ticket items to, to keep us poised to grow, I think is big. Well, Senator, I, uh, you know, on behalf of uh, myself and the law firm and our clients, we thank you for your continued leadership and your public service. And so you truly are a public servant. So thank you very much. Well, I got to say, I learned that Leadership here when I was a young associate at Trip Scott from clerking with you guys during the law school to my first couple of years of practicing law here, learning under the likes of, of Norman Tripp and Jim Scott and Dennis Smith I mean, has really helped me in my career um, moving forward. So as, as I started off, it's glad to be back home. Well, I appreciate that. And then I will make sure they know. But thank you again. Thank you.